Hello and welcome to day four of our five-day cooking challenge. I'm Elizabeth and I hope you're doing well. I hope this has been fun for you and maybe a little bit challenging. Um, you know, if you're cooking the recipes that I selected for the meal plan, they're not all the easiest and fastest. And I did that on purpose. I just wanted to give you a variety of flavors, really good food that your family is going to rave about. So if anybody has been giving you a hard time about your healthy diet, hopefully this has just put the kibosh on that and they'll say, hey, yeah, bring us this healthy food anytime. Um, but I wanted you to try some harder things. I didn't want to be deceptive and say, oh, look, you could cook, you know, Monday through Friday, no matter how busy your week was. But I chose like super, super simple basic recipes. No, these are um, kind of advanced recipes. And tonight is no different. I mean, I think that all of these recipes I chose this week are great ones, but this is probably the favorite in my house right now. General Tso's chicken. Just like from a takeout place, but you know, um, a lot of Chinese restaurants can make food gluten-free because they use a lot of rice, rice flours, and that sort of thing. But there's always sort of a language barrier, and I never really know for sure if it's really going to be gluten-free. And so it's just safer to eat at home. And can you see? <laughs> we have a lot of ingredients. I know there's a lot of ingredients. This is actually everything for the whole dinner. We have our side dishes and everything here. Um, but it's really okay. You can do it. And these are pantry ingredients. You should have these on hand, or if you buy them, then you'll have them for the next time. And you'll get a lot of use out of these. So let's get started. So the, we're making basically a lightly breaded chicken, and then a sauce and then some vegetables and some rice stick noodles. I'll talk about the side dishes in a minute. I also said no special tools are necessary and no special tools are necessary. I know a lot of you have an Instant Pot, so I'm gonna show you how to use the Instant Pot, but you do not have to. You can do this browning step on your stove, and then when we put the lid on and we put the chicken under pressure, you can put a lid on your pot on the stove, turn the temperature down, and let it just simmer. So this is going to cook under high pressure for 10 minutes, and then we're going to let the pressure come down for five. It's probably about five minutes to come up. So it's about 20 minutes of sort of simmering time. So you'll probably need 30 minutes of simmering time on your stove or a little bit more. Um, you could also make this in a crock pot if you like. Now there are some crock pots on the market now or slow cookers that have a saute function just like the Instant Pot, which is amazing. So. However you have to saute your chicken, you need to do that step. Do the breading and do the sauteing. Actually, hold that thought. Um, and then add it to your slow cooker, add the sauce in, set it on low, and let it go all day long. So this recipe is super adaptable. So you do not have to do the breading step. You don't. You can leave that out because it's not going to be crispy. It's not going to be like fried chicken. But by breading it and then frying it, that's adding flavor. But the breading is just arrowroot flour, and that is um, going to be what thickens our sauce. You don't have to add a thickener later. So if you choose to not do the frying step, again, totally fine, would we'll make it faster and easier, then you'll need to do some thickening at the end. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to turn my Instant Pot on to saute more. Saute. You have to hit adjust so it goes up to more. So my Instant Pot is several years old and yours might have slightly different buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and crack my egg because that's the first thing that's gonna happen after I get my chicken all clean. It's gonna go in this egg. You don't need to mix it with milk or anything like that. Just the egg. I'm just gonna beat it up really well. Okay, so I love chicken thighs. My family loves chicken thighs. They're more economical than chicken breasts, and I think they taste better. Um, they're certainly what is traditional with, uh, with Chinese food. I need to go ahead and add my oil so that I don't have my, hot, my um, pot just cooking away by itself over there. And I want two tablespoons of coconut oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and add it all in. 
Uh, when I've made this in the past, it's been fine like that. Um, you will need to cook your chicken in batches. And so if you want to just add some of the oil now and, you know, a little bit more as you continue to cook your chicken, that's totally fine. Um, but it's worked out fine for me to add it all in at once. I have a little towel hanging right here, so if you wonder what I'm wiping my hands on, I've got a towel. So I have about two pounds of chicken thighs. These were bone in, skin on, and I just r removed all that. So I just want to show you, I saved one. I did the rest of them ahead of time, and I saved one to show you. So I sharpened my knife. Usually the skin is kind of loose. You can really pull it off with your hands. I'm just trying to keep one clean hand. So just kind of get under there and get that off. Uh, chicken thighs do tend to be fattier, which is another reason why either the pressure cooking or slow cooking is really uh, a good idea with this particular recipe if you're going to use chicken thighs. Okay, so this is popping. It's getting ready for me, and I'm not quite ready for it, so I'm going to just turn it off for a second. All right, so you flip it over, and there's this big bone right in the middle. So just use your knife and kind of work around the bone. I kind of go one way, and then I'll go back the other way. Make sure you get the cartilage. And then do not throw this away. Put it in your freezer, your fridge, whatever, if you're gonna to get to it quickly, and use it uh, to make broth. So I had about eight thigh bones with a little bit of meat on them. So I'll add that to something like um, a turkey wing. Wings and feet have a lot of collagen in them, which is what you want when you're making broth. So I can buy a package of two turkey wings at my Whole Foods. They almost always have them. So that's just what I typically use. So then when you're cutting it up, I try to make my cut where there's something I want to cut out. So there's like this big blob of fat right there. I know that doesn't sound very nice, but that's what it is. So I just make my cut right there so that then that thing that I want to cut out is more exposed. It would be fine to leave it in there. You don't have to cut that out because it's going to it's going to render out when you're when it's either simmered all day or cooked under pressure. This one was actually really big. Most thighs are not that large, and I cut each one into about six bite-sized pieces. Um, again, this one was a little bit larger. Okay, so I'm going to add this to that and just move this to the side. I'm going to need that again in a second, but I'll get it cleaned up. All right, so I can smell my coconut oil. I'm just gonna kind of swirl that around so the whole bottom is coated. And I'm going to put my chicken in here. Just toss it around. Try to keep one dry hand, one wet hand. And then I need arrowroot starch, about a third of a cup. And I just have it in my canister here. Kind of swap these. Do these canisters look familiar to any of you? These were my grandma's. I know they're they were not uncommon back in the day. I've seen them on some TV shows. They'll be on the set occasionally, which is pretty fun. So I didn't measure that. You know, you don't really need to measure it. But you do need just about a third of a cup. Okay, here's my dry hand. So, sort of separate it as you plop it in to the arrowroot, and then toss this around. I kind of toss it and set it to the side so that I have space to do some more. Try to get as much done as will fit in, you know, one batch in the Instant Pot. 
I know you can buy this kind of stuff in the freezer section, and, and you can even find it gluten-free, but gluten-free isn't everything. You know, the grains are really a problem for a lot of people. Certainly if you're in the beginning of your healing journey and you're really trying to heal your gut, you, you really want to go paleo. You want to avoid all the grains. So learning how and becoming okay with cooking at home is, is really just key. It's gonna, it's gonna get you better faster. It's okay if the pieces are not totally covered in the arrowroot. Again, it's just, it's giving something to brown and that's gonna add flavor and then it's gonna be the thickener. So that's about full. So I'm just gonna keep going with this and I'm gonna move it a little bit closer to me. This is really an excessive amount. I use these um, packages of chicken from Costco and they're great and they're a good price, but you know, they're not even. One, one package might be a half a pound and the next package is a little over a full pound. So that makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. And it just so happened that both of these packages were pretty large. When they're frozen, it's hard to tell. I should probably, gosh, if I was really on top of it, when I got home from the store, I would weigh them. So I would separate the packages because they come like three or six packed together. I would weigh them and then mark on them how much they weigh. <laughs> that would be really great, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to have to add more arrowroot. So I'm going to go ahead and just do all this yucky wet part right now, and then I'll wash, and then I'll have a clean hand to scoop. So I'm sorry if there's a lot of background noise. We're actually having a hurricane today, which thankfully we're not really in the bullseye. We're just getting the outer bands of it. Um, so we're having sort of bands of heavy rain and wind, so there might be some noise. I really want a slotted spoon. I forgot that this is what I did last time. I used forks to turn this over. I don't know if it's the coconut oil or what, but a lot of times stuff sticks, or if it's the arrowroot that isn't sticking, but um, this is not sticking, which is why I found that I could put the whole amount of coconut oil in. I'm not having to clean it out. All right, so I'm going to scoop in some more arrowroot. You could put this in a baggie and just shake it all up. It gets really sticky pretty fast. This feels too fussy to you. Seriously, just don't do it. Just don't do this part. It'll be totally fine. The sauce is so much yummy flavor. You do not need to do the spreading part. You'll just have to thicken it at the end, which we've done a lot of times. You can use glucomannan. You can use arrowroot. You could use cassava flour. You could use any of the gluten-free flours, starches. How many times have you thought it would be super nice to have three or four hands? Okay, so my recipe I say, don't expect this to turn brown. It's not browning. You really don't want it to go to the point of browning. You want it to just get crispy. I don't know if you can see. It's, it's set. So that's all you're going for. By the time you get one batch breaded, what you have in there will be ready to flip or come out. So the timing works out fine. So I would love to know what you do to pass the time when you're cooking. I um, really, really look forward to cooking. I just, I really do. Um, I know not everybody does, and I don't always. By having a plan, 
helps a, helps a lot. It helps me be able to look forward to it because I'm not stressed. But also, I will, most often I listen to podcasts. I have so many podcasts that I enjoy. I just can't keep up with them anymore. I take walks so I can listen to podcasts. I mean, I like to take walks anyway, but listening to podcasts, is just what I do when I walk, you know. Um, so when I'm cooking, I will. Sorry, I, <laughs> my brain is full, tired, just doing a lot. Um, so I will listen to podcasts when I cook or watch YouTube. And if I'm watching YouTube, I am not watching something educational. I'm watching something that is just totally for fun. Um, like Walmart clothing for the fall, you know. Or I love to travel. I dream about traveling. So I'll watch people's travel, um, travel reports. So I'm just tossing this around because I just don't want to add any more air root. It's going to be fine. So sometimes I will um, watch YouTube, and sometimes I'll even watch TV. Now, not something that I, you know, am really super interested in because I can't completely pay attention, but maybe something I've watched before, like um, Downton Abbey. Anyone? Anyone watching Downton Abbey again for the second or third or maybe fourth time? Getting ready for the movie to come out? Yes. Um, so that's the sort of thing that I will do when I'm cooking. I just love it. So sometimes I put my headphones in. Sometimes I don't. And it's, but it's something I really can look forward to. If I were not going to particularly enjoy the cooking process, I have something else to look forward to. So let me know if you do something else. Let all of us know what you do to make cooking not a chore. Okay, so while this part is going, my chicken is all ready now. What's going to happen next, once all of it is browned, is I'm going to add, let me read and make sure I tell you correctly. Once we get all of our chicken done, we're going to add sesame oil, sesame seeds, garlic, and ginger, and cook that for a minute. So I'm going to get all of that ready. I have a clean cutting board and I cleaned my knife. So I have four cloves of garlic, and got away from me. one of my least favorite things to do. I don't enjoy chopping garlic. All right, that chicken's going to be done enough. I got to switch. It's the only downside of using the instant pot like this is that it's not a huge surface area. You have an eight quart, it's going to be a little bit better. The six quart, I mean, it's fine. It's fine, but it's not super big. to scoot it closer so I can see in there. A couple more inches, God, would have been really nice, but he wanted to make me 5'3", so that's what I got. My husband is tall. His whole family is tall. There is some height in my family. I'm hoping my kids will both end up taller than me which should not be hard. My son is, so he's already achieved it. I hope he's going to be a little taller than he is right now, but he is already taller than me. But my daughter isn't yet, so we're hoping she gets there. All right, so that's going to go, and then I'll probably have this, just this one more batch. If it gets really sticky, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just separating them so it'll be ready. All right, so I'm getting my garlic all chopped up and then I'm gonna grate my ginger. You can buy ginger in jars and in those little tubes. You know, they sell garlic like that too, already chopped and there, there must be something in it. I feel like I've looked at it at the grocery store before and haven't bought it. So it's either the price or there's some sort of additive that I'm not a fan of. 
if you use those pre-chopped um, ginger or garlic, let me, let me know how it, how it works for you. And if the ingredients are clean. I know there's something in it besides just what it is, garlic or ginger. So it's four cloves of garlic and we need a tablespoon of fresh grated ginger. This last ginger I bought is really skinny. I always, I'll show you what I mean. I always try to buy really fat ginger, like a big, like big piece of it because then it's easier to grate. So you wanna peel it, you can use a vegetable peeler. When it's real fat too, you can just take your knife and kind of cut that edge off. But when it's skinny, you would lose too much if you did that. All right, here's my public service announcement. I am a huge fan of the Whole30, which you probably know since I did the 30 days of Whole30 and I videoed the dinner every day. Um, big fan. And I love to do it in the fall, like mid-September, or you can do the whole month of September. It's a little late for that now since it's, you know, we're already mid-September. Um, but I just think it gets you set up for going into the holiday season. It's kind of clean, you know. You've tamed your sweet tooth and just healthier. Even though I do really well almost all the time with what I eat, I'm really conscious of it. I, I eat treats, you know. I love ice cream. When we travel, I eat ice cream, that kind of thing. Um, and so I love a whole thirty. It's just a great reset. So it's September. If you're a coffee drinker, coffee lover, you do not have to give up your coffee on whole thirty. Hallelujah! It's fabulous. Um, but you need to probably check on your creamer. So there's no dairy allowed. So you can't have any sort of dairy creamer and you can't have any kind of sweetener. And my favorite, my absolute favorite, Whole30 approved creamer is Nut Pods. It's the brand Nut Pods. I actually use it all the time, even when I'm not doing a Whole30 because I just love the flavor. They used to just have original. It's coconut and almond milk mixed together, and it's just a really good texture. It's expensive. It's about three dollars for a carton of it. So depending on how much you use, that can get really expensive really fast. I will link in this video um, to it on Amazon because you can get it cheaper on Amazon if you buy if you buy it a certain way. Um, but they had this original, which is no flavor, and hazelnut and vanilla. And then they came out with caramel, which really tastes sweet to me. I love it. And then they came out with pumpkin spice. So all of this that I've been saying is leading up to pumpkin spice nut pods. And it is good. It tastes good. It smells good. It if you like pumpkin spice, you will love it. And if you are willing to do a whole 30, you want to do one with me, um, you need to get yourself some nut pods and you need to order it before everybody else gets wise to it and takes all of our pumpkin spice. The only thing I don't like about this thing is some stuff gets stuck in here. And ginger is one of those things. So we want about a tablespoon, and that's about a tablespoon. So we'll stop right there. This chicken is ready. Because these were such huge packs of chicken, this is probably closer to three pounds of chicken. I'm going to add just a teeny bit more coconut oil because it is dry now. Now one thing I hope you notice, I... I cook with a lot of salt. That's not what I hope you notice, but um, there's actually no salt in this recipe because some of the sauce ingredients are salty. And you just, I, if I don't need to add 
salt. Probably nobody needs to add salt. So this one, I'm just going to scrape this in, and then I'll spread it out. And I don't add pepper either because we add a little bit of crushed red pepper, but you can certainly add red pepper. Okay, and the other thing we're gonna add in there just as soon as this chicken is done are sesame seeds, totally optional. They do have a flavor, and so they have something to add, which is great, um, but you don't have to add them, it's fine. So I used to wonder why so many people walked around with those Yeti cups. I know they're supposed to be so great about insulating, but I just thought, you know, a water bottle is so much more convenient in my opinion. But then they have these cups at Costco, and I, I mean, I've never had a Yeti. Well, that's not true, my husband has one. He got it work. I think it insulates just as well as the Yeti. Um, and they're really pretty. It was this gray, and then there's like a rose gold pink one. And the thing is, I drink so much more water when I drink out of the straw as compared to a water bottle. I think I just get like a bigger gulp every time, so I end up drinking more water, and I really like that. So something you can do while you're waiting is measure out all your sauce ingredients and put those in a big bowl or a big measuring cup um, so you're all ready to go when it's time. I'm not going to do that, but that's just something you could do. We are going to need a half a cup of chicken broth. I'm wondering if I should double the sauce since there's so much chicken this time, but I'm not. I thought there was enough sauce. Okay, good enough. I'm going to be adding two teaspoons of sesame oil. Again, you could skip the sesame oil if you want. If you don't have any, you can't find it. It's in the Asian section of the grocery store, and it adds a lot of flavor. I would recommend investing in a bottle of sesame oil. I about need to invest in a new bottle. I use it in my egg roll in a bowl. It just adds a really good flavor. Okay, so then in go the ginger and garlic. You don't want your ginger to burn, so be careful. And then the tablespoon of sesame seeds. It's kind of an arbitrary measurement. It, it could be more, it could be less. About a tablespoon. You could just sprinkle some in. So just give this a stir. is really hot so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. It's going to be fine. Plenty of heat still here. Actually let me use my spoon. I don't have to stick my hand all the way down in there. You see how it's starting to brown? It just takes a minute. You want to toast your sesame seeds. You can buy toasted sesame seeds or some recipes actually call for you to toast them on the stove later but this is already complicated enough. We don't need an extra step of toasting our sesame seeds separately. Okay, so now we're going to add in half a cup of broth. And I'm going to use that to really deglaze the bottom of my pan because there's not a lot of fond. Fond is that kind of brown stuff at the bottom. There's not a lot of that there, but if you do have a, a decent amount of it on the bottom, your pan could potentially not pressurize. And we do not want that. So, okay, whoops, I need this. Oh, here it is. I need a third of a cup of coconut aminos. I thought it was about out, so I grabbed another one. I don't like it when they don't have the little perforated. You know what I mean? The plastic has the perforations, makes it easy for you to um, take that outer stuff off. Okay, a third of a cup of coconut aminos, a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses. So if you're doing Whole30 and you really want to make this, fine. You can make it, just use some dates 
and you'll get a lot of sweetness from dates. So this is a giant bottle of molasses because I used to sell my molasses cookies and I still haven't used it all up. So the molasses, again, this is an optional ingredient. You don't have to add it. it has a really rich flavor that I think adds something to this dish. We're trying to recreate, you know, a real Chinese restaurant experience. I've about used all of my measuring spoons and I need one and a half tablespoons of this. I'm using the dark or golden monk fruit sweetener because I just don't want to add a whole lot of sugar. But you could use coconut sugar. If you don't have coconut sugar and you're fine with going non-paleo, you could use brown sugar. It's fine. Um, you probably want to use about two to three tablespoons. So a tablespoon and a half of this monk fruit sweetener I think makes it just the right amount of sweetness and then a quarter of a cup of rice vinegar and again this is one of those ingredients you could substitute um, this completely lost it apple cider vinegar uh, but this cider vinegar gives it really that authentic taste and again just find it in the Asian section of your grocery store it is not difficult to find and then two tablespoons of tomato paste and because all my tomato spoon tomato spoon tablespoon measuring spoons are dirty let me just use a spoon to get about the right amount let me clean it off so it is not thick now because there's no thickener in here remember the thickener is all on our chicken if once it's done, I feel like I want just a little bit more sauce. I can add a little more broth and coconut aminos and it'll be fine. Okay, what I'm gonna do is wipe off the edge here. I've gotten a little bit of some of these ingredients on the edge and I don't want that there. Uh, anything to potentially make it not seal. Okay, so in goes my chicken any juices that have accumulated in that pan and then you're just going to stir it around gently to coat everything okay so it's already off I'm going to put my lid on my gasket's in there it was kind of off you know this comes off so make sure that's pressed on move it to ceiling and we're going to cook under manual high pressure for 10 minutes and while that cooks there's here's my red pepper for garnish i might want some more coconut aminos so i'm going to leave that out and then i'm just going to clean up all the rest of this so you don't have to watch that Okie dokie, so our chicken has cooked for it's a lot of time and I want it to um, depressurize on its own for a few minutes before I release the rest. I'm just going to show you the veggies. There was a little bit of aminos left in here. So I'm going to pour that in with my vegetables. And I just have my skillet on about medium high. I put a little bit of oil in there and I'm going to add my vegetables, which I have a lot of veggies here. I might just put about half in let's see I don't want to overfill my skillet of sugar snap peas down here and then some broccoli remember we didn't have any salt or pepper in the chicken but I do want some salt in my vegetables and I am going to put in a little more coconut aminos which has but even still, we need a little bit of seasoning on there. If you wanted to speed that up, you could put a lid on it. Okay, and so over here we have water, just water. And I'm going to make these rice stick noodles to go with our dinner tonight. I made them to go with Asian spaghetti because they are like spaghetti noodles, but they're made out of rice. In fact, the only ingredients are rice and water. So there are a lot of different things that are like this. Some are called ramen. Um, 
I'm trying to think of some of the other names. I've looked for them at several different stores and I just can't remember. There are lots of different names for things that look like this, but you definitely want the rice sticks or vermicelli. They, and you look at the ingredients, rice and water. That's all you want. This particular package was produced in a facility that processes wheat, so they are not certified gluten-free, but that's fine for our family. Um, and it's just fun. It's a little different from rice. You could absolutely make rice. You could do cauliflower rice, which is what we have done in the past. Um, you could do, you know, squash noodles, zucchini noodles, all that sort of thing. Um, but I need to feed my growing people a little bit of starch. So we're going to do these. So you just bring your pot of water to a boil and you put the noodles in for about three minutes. So I'm going to actually move this onto my other burner so it boils faster. So whenever I do veggies in a skillet like this, I usually just let them cook for a few minutes. They start to get a little brown actually, which from a health perspective, that isn't really good for you. Um, we won't go into that in detail, but the browning is, is not really good for your body. But what counteracts that are the phytonutrients in the vegetables. So a little bit of it is okay. Um, you don't have to do that, but we're basically letting some of the water cook out, let, letting some of the water then evaporate. And so, um, whoops. You can get a little bit of brown. I think I can get the rest of these in here. We can have leftovers tomorrow. There's just a teeny bit of oil in there. That was a problem. And then I put in some coconut aminos because we have it. If I cook a vegetable in coconut aminos, my children. I think I'm a superhero. My kids are really good about eating vegetables. They really can't complain about it anymore. Um, but if you have people in your house that don't like veggies, try. Try some aminos. I can't get this. Whoop, there we go. Let's see if they got out of there. So I can use the little bowl. So it is from coconut nectar. That's what the aminos are. And so there are carbohydrates in this and it will caramelize. Two grams of carbs per teaspoon. Um, so that makes a really yummy flavor. You just stir that around. And again, it serves as a salt component, so you don't need to add quite as much salt. Doesn't that look pretty? Let's see how we're doing with our chicken. Oh, it's come down six. Minutes. I wanted it to naturally depressurize for five, so it did six. That's okay. Sorry, that looked terrible. I left my blind up. I was doing what I said, and I was watching a YouTube video while I was doing the dishes. I had my iPad propped up in the window. So at least I, uh, I walked the walk. Walk the talk. You know what I mean. I do what I tell you I'm doing. Okay, let me get a pair of scissors for my green onions. This one has seen better days. Let's see if we can get a good one here. This one looks good. We're really getting the water to cook out. Just cook your veggies however you like them. Some people like them really well done. Some people need them really done, well done for digestion purposes. Do what you do what you want to do or do what you need to do, okay? Alright, that pressure came down. I heard it. Oh, I can smell it. I'm kind of juggling over here. I want to make sure. You can see, doesn't that look pretty? It, oh, that was hot. It looks just like our Chinese favorite. It smells just like it. I'm so excited for this dinner.
My dad, dad, does not like chicken thighs because of the, you know, sometimes they're kind of fatty and have all that gross stuff. But when you cook it under pressure, that cooks out. If you would cook it in your crock pot for a long time, it cooks out. No problem. Let me turn this off. I'm going to turn on saute less just to keep it warm, which it is totally warm. But I've got a few more minutes to go on my veggies. Okay, let me show you how we do the noodles. Goodness. Okay, so it's boiling. And we just put them in. And I kind of press them down. And then they cook for three minutes. It's so good. Such a complex flavor. It's the sesame and the ginger and the garlic and the rice vinegar. All of those ingredients really play a role. It's so good. I hope you make this. I hope your family loves it. I don't think it needs anything. It's just perfect like it is and we'll let it cool. Can't have that sauce on the counter. Okay, here are cooked noodles. Our veggies are just about perfect. These rice noodles, I really think like the whole package is one great big noodle. So I have my kitchen scissors and I kind of, it's like I give them a haircut. It's kind of fun. If you have a kid that's old enough to to handle that, let them let them do it because it's it's kind of fun. Okay, so we put some of those in. Again, rice will be fine. Veggie noodles, cauliflower rice, perfect. I wish I had made myself some cauliflower rice, but I just didn't think about it. Since I made so much, they can have a nice big serving of chicken. They're going to be grilled. A delicious sauce. Likewise, large serving of vegetables on the side. This will be a kid's plate. I'll make sure they get plenty of peas because they love them. Okay, and here is our General Tso's chicken. It's really good. Yes, it took a little bit longer to make. You probably aren't saving any time unless your Chinese restaurant where you would eat is really far away. But you're saving your body, you're saving your health because this is not going to make you sick. It's so delicious. You're not going to miss anything and it's good for you. So I hope you make this one. Okay, I hope day four has gone well or goes well. And post your pictures. Don't forget to post your pictures. I already had your prizes. I'm super excited to send them out. And day five tomorrow, day five, you're going to love it. And... I can't wait to see you inside the Facebook group. All right, good night, everybody.